I'm not sure who deserves to be given the benefit of the doubt less than a guy that has been spreading misinformation about food to the masses for years that won't listen to food scientists, dietitians, and farmers, but let's give him the benefit of the doubt anyways. And let's say that all he was saying is that you need minerals in your body, all this purified stuff is taking out the nutrients we need. Let's just say that is what he was claiming. All right, so let's do the math. All right, so to get to even 2% of the recommended daily amount of potassium via pink Himalayan salt, you would need to eat 34 grams of that salt daily, which would end up being five and a half times the maximum amount of sodium recommended a day, which is 2,300 milligrams of sodium. To get to just 2% of the recommended daily amount of magnesium, you would need to eat over eight grams of pink Himalayan salt per day. Again, this is above the maximum 2,300 milligrams of sodium that is recommended a day. And again, that's just to get to 2% daily value of these minerals. To get to just 2% of the daily recommended amount of iron, you would need to consume over 10 grams of pink Himalayan salt per day. That would be one and a half times the maximum sodium amount that is recommended per day. If you wanted to reach the recommended daily amount of magnesium, you would need to eat over 300 grams of pink Himalayan salt per day. That is over the lethal dose of sodium chloride. To get to even 5% of the recommended daily amount of magnesium, you'd be eating over three times the recommended amount of sodium per day. So one of the other ones that he mentioned that was problematic was iodized salt, when in reality, that one actually would only take about a half a teaspoon to three quarters of a teaspoon to get to the daily recommended amount of iodine per day. And that only ends up at about 50% of the recommended daily amount of sodium intake per day as well. So you're not having to eat lethal amounts to get you know, a significant amount of iodine. This has actually helped to reduce iodine deficiency. So quite literally, the only one that has a meaningful amount of an additional mineral is iodized salt, which he's saying is a problem because it's purified and processed. You guys, this is literally just the appeal to nature fallacy. Oh, by the way, with that lethal dose of pink Himalayan salt, you'd still only be getting 12% of your daily recommended amount of iron and only 40% of your daily recommended amount of potassium but you'd be dead, so there's that. Not to mention with the unrefined ones, you'll have more potential exposure to heavy metals as well. So the refining and the addition of iodine is actually making it safer and more nutritious than the unrefined versions. But hey, I'm just someone that did the math for you and explained it to you versus just reading a blog online and regurgitating it. What do I know?